Welcome to the second in the Captorhood series, we're calling it Captor 102, where we're going to consider how we would physically measure the performance of a hood, captor hood, the captor distance, and therefore the control area. What we talked about in the previous video was that there are ways of calculating how quickly the velocity at the face will reduce as it comes away from the hood entrance. Fletcher's nomogram gives us this um, equation. But you guys are going to be physically on site. Now what are we going to do to measure it when we get on site? Now it could be for LEV examining and testing, it could be for commissioning, but somehow at the end of the day I'd like to see people putting labels on that say that this hood will be effective to the distance that you specify in your label. And that, I believe, should be part of the exercise for commissioning and for testing. Indeed, that distance, the distance that this hood will control to, should be in the manual logbook that goes with this installation. Now, as we mentioned earlier, some people, I've known some, some people who do this, they will use a rotating vein anemometer, they'll place it on the entrance, but as we know, their effect, first of all, they're disturbing the airflow going in because the size of the instrument is large compared to the size of the opening. But secondly, if you think about it, they're actually measuring the velocity here. And as we saw in Captor 101, the velocity is dropping very fast as we come out. So this device will significantly under-read reality if you use it on a hood, in my opinion. We can then use the hot wire anemometer. So we could take readings at the face with the hot wire anemometer. It's getting closer. The head is small. It's not going to disturb the airflow, certainly in any significant way. But what about the velocity captor, the captor velocity? So we know if we look at the guidance, if you're welding um, or soldering or something like that, the range of captive velocities that we're looking for are between 0.5 and 1 meter per second. Now, if we just want to reiterate there, for welding, for example, 0.5 would be for mild steel, non-toxic, relatively speaking, welding in still air conditions, um, perhaps uh, just a little jobbing welding now and again. The 1 meter per second, 0.5 up to 1 meter per second, the 1 meter per second is for more toxic welding, such as stainless steel. And the stainless steel is quite a common welding operation. It requires not 0.5 meters per second, it requires 1 meter per second. So how are we going to measure those? Are we going to hold it on the centre line, uh, if we uh, probably doesn't show up, there's a little laser shining in on the centre line here as we speak. Are we going to come out? Now, what I've done, I've done this earlier today, and the error margin, once we come away from the entrance, is quite significant. And it's the same error margin with these, 0.5 metres per second. The veins are not turning terribly fast. Um, the velocity may be coming predominantly from an angle. Measuring out here can be done, but I really don't recommend it. We could use smoke. Smoke is the most common way of doing it. And before I switch the unit on, because it gets a little bit noisy, we would typically release smoke on the center line out. We would be coming out. Those of you who have been on the Oxlate training courses know that we talk about until the point where a little bit of the smoke isn't controlled, most of it is, and then we move back 50 mil and we measure that with a tape measure. Now, the issue I have with that, and I would welcome comment um, on the uh, video, the issue is that I think smoke will be controlled at velocities well below 0.5 meters per second. Now for health control and health protection, worker health protection, we need for welding at least 0.5. So what we're going to do is a little experiment to see um, how far out the smoke will go. 
If we look at the board here, what I have done is what I would possibly recommend, and that is using a hot wire anemometer, I have taken a series of readings across the open face. I then average those readings uh, to double check that I've got it right. Outside, I've also taken readings in the duct with a pitot tube. And I find that the two sets of readings were within 5 or 6% of each other. It gave me, on this particular hood, an entrance velocity of 9.1 to 9.2 meters per second. Now, that's a good velocity. Many of these captor hoods will run at less than 9 meters per second. Now, what I have done, I've used Fletcher's equations to calculate. Now, they are accurate. Never mind measuring, I've used Fletcher's to calculate how far out before it drops to one meter per second, which is for um, stainless steel, heavy, busy workshops, drafty conditions, and the arc comes to here. Now, that arc is 160 millimeters, 0.16 meters from the entrance. I've also run it through Fletcher, and I've asked it to tell me when it would drop to 0.16 five meters per second and it tells me that 0.5 meters per second drops at around 230 mil out and I've put those two relative markers down so the blue one is one meter per second the velocity on the center line we can see the the laser on my finger the velocity on the center line will drop to one meter per second about here and at 0.5 meters per second it'll go out to the yellow line what we're going to do is use the smoke. We're going to switch it on, use the smoke, and we'll see what the smoke says, because this is, and I appreciate, this is the one we've used for years, but I do have my doubts, so switching on. So we could handhold the smoke, we could release it on the center line. I find it just so happens it works very well with the laser and I think you'll see it quite well on the center line with the laser and what we're going to do is we're going to come out until we're just going to lose it we are I think just getting to that point now there's some of it coming here there's an odd little bit escaping now this is still air conditions here a little bit coming so I would just come back 50 mil and that is where I would do it so if we then do that we find the smoke goes to here measuring that from the entrance we find that we have 400 millimeter. 400 millimeter. This one here, if you remember, was 230. That one was 160. This is the phenomenon that people rarely understand. Number one, it falls enormously as it comes down out from the entrance. You're only going to get 160 mil if you want one meter per second from this nine meters per second hood face velocity you're only going to get something like 230 millimeters down to 0.5 but if we as examiners testers and commissioners rely on smoke only then it's going to give us a false impression it's going to show us something like 400 in this case now I ran that I've done this one like Blue Peter I've done it before and I ran 400 mil through Fletcher and it tells me that the velocity here will have dropped to about 0.2 meters per second. Now that's the thing, we do use smoke, smoke is still important. I think what I would prefer is that in addition to smoke, um, you run it through Fletcher and you work out whether you need one meter per second or you need 0.5 meters per second I would prefer that you use these for your label that you will eventually put on the hood. Now that's, it's a little bit controversial because we've always used smoke.
people will use the smoke, put the smoke on here. But the danger and the difficulty I have is that, as we've seen, the smoke will go further in still air conditions and will tend to give us um, a false indication. Now, I've opened the doors to the studio and I've run this exercise with the doors open. There's a little bit of a breeze outside, some air coming in, so we're getting significant drafts. And it comes closer to the 0.5. So you will, you will actually find, um, in a drafty situation, Fletcher will certainly be more accurate on what you're going to get by way of control distance. So that's all we're going to do today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do visit our website at oxalate.com. There's a lot of useful information. There's other training videos there. And if you would like the Fletcher Excel spreadsheet, if you are a past delegate, you'll already be able to get into the delegate area using your passcode. If not, do drop me an email, bill at oxalate.com, and I'll happily send you this little spreadsheet out. It's very easy to use that will calculate these distances for you. Thank you very much. See you again sometime. <laughs>